Sake prostheses have improved quality of life for many amputees. However, for people who experience discomfort, skin issues, or frequent prosthesis refittings, osseointegration, or OI, has become an appealing option. OI involves surgically inserting a metal implant into the bone, removing the need for a socket. Am I a good candidate? You may be a good candidate for OI if you are an above the knee, transfemoral, below the knee, transtibial, or above the elbow, transhumeral, amputee. OI may not be appropriate for patients with a diagnosis of diabetes, neuropathy, osteoporosis, or peripheral vascular disease. OI is not recommended for smokers or individuals with a high body weight. Implant types. There are currently two OI implant types available in the U.S., OPRA and OPL. A third implant, Compress, is only available on clinical trial. These systems differ in their designs, number of required surgical stages, and levels at which they sit in the bone. Certain implants, like OPRA, are FDA approved for transfemoral amputees primarily, but it may be available in select cases for transtibial or transhumeral use. As FDA approval varies for each implant, it is important to discuss your options during your first evaluation. Evaluation A team of clinicians, including surgeons, physiatrists, prosthetists, and other rehabilitation therapists, look at various factors vital to your recovery. X-rays, lab results, and medical history are checked for bone quality or vitamin D and calcium levels. Based on lab or x-ray findings, supplements can be recommended. It's important to know that OI can be an emotional process that may require mental health specialist support. Medical clearance may be needed from your primary care physician. Final surgical clearance will come from the OI clinician team. Surgery. If the chosen implant requires two surgeries, there will be a three-month healing period between surgeries to let the bone heal around the implant. You should not put any weight on the limb while healing, but may work on core training with the physical therapist. Rehabilitation. About six weeks after your final surgery, your rehabilitative journey begins. You will start with hip and core strengthening exercises before moving to a short training prosthesis. You will slowly increase the weight put on the leg until you can support your own body weight on the short prosthesis. After physician approval, you will be fitted for a full prosthesis and continue walking training, initially with the help of crutches or raised bars. Each completed rehabilitation milestone strengthens the patient and helps the OI implant form a stronger connection with the bone. Over time, you can tolerate physical activity unsupported. The time it takes to walk unsupported on a full prosthesis varies from person to person, sometimes taking over a year. Long-term care. Long-term care of an OI implant needs regular monitoring. You must regularly clean and check the skin around your implant for signs of skin infection. Other complications may include bone infections, fractures, or implant loosening. OI is a promising choice for amputees who want an alternative to socket prostheses. However, it's important to understand that OI is more than just a surgery. It is a long, rehabilitative journey that requires proper communication, patience, and a holistic approach.